Singular at the Half, sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to Singular at the Half here in our studios in New York. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg at the break. The Kansas Jayhawks over Illinois by a score of 40 to 34 in a game. Both teams are looking pretty good. They really are. Kansas able to survive some foul trouble. Neither team really shooting at Kansas shooting it well, but turned it over a lot. Ten turnovers. Illinois capitalized on a bunch of those turnovers, and that's why they're within six. Kansas got good play from their bench, and particularly Aaron Miles uh, as a starting point guard. All right, Clark, in our other game at this moment in Syracuse, they are uh, at halftime, and Maryland leads Kentucky by a score of 39 to 30. You know, I, I want them to be disappointed, and they are disappointed because, you know, we're like everybody that's in this tournament. You want to win the whole thing, and when you lose, you, you're disappointed. But I told them it could be just the beginning. So Oregon a winner by two. They await the winner of the Illinois-Kansas game. And earlier tonight in Syracuse, you the winner of Kentucky against Maryland. 71-59, the Huskies win it. Now, halftime is over in the East Regional Semifinal between Kentucky and Maryland. Let's take you out to the Carrier Dome. Join the action live in Syracuse. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. First possession of the second half belongs to Kentucky. The Cats down six. Hawkins looking to Lane. Hayes looking for help. Just put it up and tipped oh. in by Kamara. Ball in the cylinder. Second time tonight we've seen somebody be able to get by with a basket with the ball in the cylinder. You thought that one shouldn't have been allowed? I do not think so. Baxter. That one was in the cylinder. But of course, the same man had it that delivered. Hawkins doing a good job penetrating off the dribble inside. And then when they try to help out, Hawkins does look for the pass rather than the shot. Bogan's jumper wide of the mark. Prince put back. Hayes battling, but no one's taking it away from Mouton. You notice how Bogans. Look at that steal oh. by Hayes. That looked like a football receiver. Well, right he's there. a 4 5, 40 yard dash man in football, and he showed it on that play. Oh, Prince really wanted to fire that three. Waits for the rest of his team to come back down court. Jimmy, remember Bogans hit two shots right at the start of this ball game, but he glided on that last jump shot to his left. Hawkins again penetrates, looks to kick. Prince looked up at the clock. Hawkins, he'll take the three. And nice. Connects. Cuts the lead in half. 41 38, Maryland. Hawkins always looks pass before shot. He's shooting 29% from three, but that one he was left wide open. Going to Baxter, trying to get him involved in the offense. Doubled up and kept alive. Mouton. Kamara with the box out on Baxter. And there's where Wilcox should be on that glass. If they're going to double down on. Push off by Blake. To so Kamara one. Let's take a look at that one, Billy. Well, one. my call is that it is in the cylinder. Let's see. Ball's up. I don't you, think oh, so. Oh, I don't think so. Any portion of the ball in the cylinder is a violation. Any portion. It looked like it was definitely on the outer side of the, of the you rim. You and Bonnie are giving me a rough time here in this second half. <laughs> you deserve it. I tell you what, I think you're rooting for somebody oh, here. Oh, Bogans with the drive. 41 40. Kentucky's cut into that lead quickly. Again, back to Baxter. Baxter just so strong in there, but you can see Gary Williams right off the bat. Baxter only had three shots in the first half. They're going to him on almost every possession when it's a half court offensive set. Tomorrow's second foul. Nobody paying attention. Oh, Wilcox sends that one into the press row as he's fouled. So many times in this tournament, we have seen an out of bounds situation. Guys with their head turned, an easy basket takes place right there. 
17-34 to play in the second half. Maryland leads at 41-40. Clark, I have to pick up on what Billy Packer is just talking about. You would expect Maryland to be owning the glass in this game so far. It hasn't happened. Well, it certainly hasn't happened, but I think what they're going to try to do is pound it inside. Kentucky has to continue to make the perimeter shot to stay close. All right. That'll do it for this edition of Singular at the Half. Thank you for joining us. A timeout, and then we'll send you back to Madison for the second half of Kansas and Illinois right after this. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Maryland, a two-point lead over Kentucky, but since this is Herbert Bogan's first ever NCAA game, to see his son, Keith, I'd imagine this is a big thrill for you. I'd imagine this is a big thrill for you. It is, it is. I like for them to pull it out. I like for them to pull it out. Now you tell me a great story about when Keith was 15 years old. What did he talk to you about? He told me that this ball or uh, round pill will take him somewhere in life. I said, if you stay with it, it will. I can guarantee you that. And he stuck with it. He went to the rec centers down in Alexandria, uh, the boys club. Um, the leasing on, on in South Alexandria. And I had to go find him in the evening, bring him home. But that's, that's the way he was. I knew where he was. And I had no problem with him being out late as long as I knew where he was. Well, all that time has certainly paid off because he's had double figures in each of the three tournament games, Jim. All right, thank you, Bonnie. Yes, Herbie Bogan's watching his son, Keith, with 13 on the night so far. Kentucky possession down two. Jim, in a game that's this tight, teams cannot afford to throw it away with plays like they had, turnovers that were really not contested. And Keith Bogans ties it at 47. He's given Dixon all he can handle. Dixon, an outstanding defensive player, first team all conference defense for the ACC, but Bogans uses his strength when he powers down inside. Boy, Baxter was wanting it. He was wide open. Nicholas found him. And you see what Baxter did? Just when he knew Estel was there for the block, he took it on the other side of the rim, put it back up inside. Clever inside post player. Baxter with eight, six of them after the intermission. Baxter looks a little tired right now, though. Daniels, spin move, nowhere to go. Got numbers here, three on one with Prince back. Nicholas gives it up. Dixon converts. And look what Baxter did. He stayed back to give defensive balance, unlike we, what we've been seeing earlier in the game. Smart play. Maybe he's tired, but in any case, we'll give him credit. Hawkins has it stripped, gets it back, tipped up. Estel and Kentucky ball. Kentucky twice in this half has come back to tie it but never take the lead. I think that Gary Williams notices that Baxter's really been expended a lot of injury. Uh, well, he's going to take out Wilcox instead of Baxter. A lot of energy, but he keeps uh, Baxter in the game. That does surprise me. Maybe he just wants Baxter to keep getting these touches and have his team used to getting that ball down inside. Hawkins beautifully set up to Estel. Now you have to act ask this question of the Maryland big man. Hawkins has shown all night that he'll put the ball, penetrate, and then look to kick out. That time you had both Holden and Baxter go over to double team or actually triple team Hawkins, leaving their men wide open. A hold call against Daniels. Watch this. Hawkins goes in. Now watch how many men are going to be on Hawkins. They're the two Maryland big men, Holden and Baxter, leaving Estel wide open. Not a wise play. You got to play Hawkins to pass, not to shoot. But Bogans really fought over the top that time. He did the close in on yes, Dixon. He, he was looking to fire up the three from the corner. And Blake penetrates. Off balance shot. A two to tie it for the third time in the half. A three to take the lead for the first time in the half. Nestle is a good outside shooter. Again, there he goes. Penetrate, kick out. Prince, baseline move. Tied at 51. He has the best floating one-hander in college basketball. He has 15 for the game. Snapping it inside. Baxter, nice soft touch. There was a case. Daniels is so far outside, he can't get in there to double team. And Gary Williams is just riding his horse, Baxter. Baxter breathing so heavily out there. The senior doesn't want to play his last game tonight. 
Nice help by Holden. Daniels screened by Estel. Bogans underneath. Dixon really forced that steal. Nice play by Baxter to come back and help Holden out so there's a passing lane. This game's getting brutal down inside on the rebounding, Jim. Dixon on a curl. Oh, Estel ties it up, and the arrow belongs to Maryland. It's amazing Dixon was able to end up on his feet on this one. Watch Estel just tear the ball back. Dixon about at a 45-degree angle and ends up still on his feet. Dixon is really being guarded beautifully by Bogans in his half. He's just not letting him get free. Kamar with the long arms, and Dick Dixon respects him, not looking to take the jump shot over a, what amounts to a seven-footer. Great screen. Run to the rim, Nicholas. Wise play by Kamar. I didn't want to be the guy on the break. Mouton on the reach in. You know, Jim, we talk about different seeds. Kentucky has faced the number one seed a number of times. We all remember that 1998 when they beat Duke 86 84 as Duke number one seed. We'll cover a couple others when we come back. Watch Aaron Miles coast to coast. Uh, this is acceleration at its best. You don't teach this. Oh my goodness, everybody caught. It is an aggressive pursuit of the tin. A major league blow by. And then the counter on the fast break. Heinrich actually took away the dribble path of Collison. He just is a, was a little quick, wasn't patient. If he waited, it would have developed. Collison could have gone right to the rim. That's the third foul on Krapalia. And Collison shoots one more. Five point game, 16.43 to go. He's checking the. Uh, He's watching head. the scoreboard, right? So, uh, you know what? When you play golf with him, he knows every stroke everybody else has. And another foursome. <laughs> Here's Head on the floor. Nice save, Williams for three. Got it! Good hustle play. Plenty of time to get organized for Williams. Williams with 13 after a very slow start. One of eight from the field. Heinrich and Colson not getting fouls. Very important. Now here's a stagger for Boshi. Collison from way outside. There's the alley oop. Cook is there to knock it away. Nice leak out. Oh, wow. What a pass. And Collison wisely didn't get involved, but you're right. A great thought process on the delivery. Williams with the courage to make the pass. Tied at 45. Sixth tie of the game. Heinrich shoves him. That's going to be an offensive foul, and that's four. Not as explosive, a little bit frustrated. He can't turn the corner. And Roy Williams applauding a guy who's had a great year. They need him to win. Watch that arm. Good defense and a counter. Heinrich has committed his fourth foul, and Illinois has pulled even with the Kansas Jayhawks. 45-45, we'll keep you updated on that, but let's get you back to Syracuse, Kentucky, and Maryland. We rejoin Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Program in as bad a shape as any program of its uh, caliber has ever been. Kentucky has tied it up three times in this half, but not taken the lead. Jim, first time tonight we've seen a zone defense by any of the teams. Maryland in a 1-2-2 zone. Hawkins recognize what's going on. Prince is trying to find a spot. There he is, deep corner. Eight on the shot clock. He's got great range, remember, on that jump shot. Hawkins inside. Kamara swatted away by Holden. Mouton. Oh, that's a tough shot by Mouton. He was worried about the shot blocking of Prince. They say it touched Prince last. Mouton should have taken this ball to the basket. What a block here by Randall. Yeah. 
We'll see if Gary Williams stays in that zone defense, and if so, does Tubby Smith change his lineup? Dixon, for the first time tonight, played by Hawkins, a smaller man. And Dixon trying to get open with Hawkins. Dixon. Nah, he was too impatient on that shot. First time tonight he's faced a smaller man wanted to shoot over him. Bogans, Nicholas draws the charge. Terrific defense. Third foul on Bogans. Watch Nicholas move his feet. Established position. Bogans just kept right on coming. 10.39 to play. Three on Bogans. Fitch checks in for Kentucky. Bogans will sit. That That'd counts be... as a turnover for Bogans. That's his first turnover in the NCAA tournament in some seven. In regulation. And Heinrich is on the bench having picked up his fourth foul. Three in the first half of play. And three, as you said, Billy, kind of cheapies. Yeah, just ones that uh, that discard there, a couple of loose ball situations, some frustration fouls, but it's been Aaron Miles' solid play. He's going to have to lead them from the point position. Illinois tries the back cut. It's kicked out of bounds. A fresh 35 now for Bill Self's team. Bill Self said, we're one and three in Madison since the Cole Center opened. Hope things go a little better. Believe it or not, Roy Williams of Kansas said he's never been to Madison before. Mm -hmm. oh, Carolina boy, Asheville. We got everything he wanted down there, all the furniture in the world, plenty of golf courses, and of course, uh, the Tar Heels for many years as a student. His son Scott went there as well, and then later assistant under Dean Smith. That one kicked out of bounds. Another fresh 35. Luther Head on the floor with Cook, Frank Williams, Corey Bradford. And Krapalya for Illinois. A nice put right to the post. Didn't get much out of it. Williams done a wonderful job on Cook. Screen set by Krapalya. There's the attempted penetration. The foul is going to be called. Aaron Miles. Boshi, who got it? Could be both in there on the pinch. Aaron Miles. His second. Cook. Out of bounds. Now that was a play for Frank Williams. He took it out. They're going to run a screen for him. But you got inbound before they come get you. Now Langford on for Heinrich and Aaron Miles, who's had a really solid game at the point thus far. Both sides of the ball, right? And he sure has. Now, I think Collison can take Kapalia if they get him involved. Foul line drive or inside, and here's the over the top. Cook on the stick. As the coaches will call it, they'll say stick him, and Gooden does. Plant that body right in him. As the ball's reversed, you turn, and now you're going to just stick that dirty air and use it wisely. Johnson replaces Brian Cook, who picks up his third personal foul. And the ball inbounded down to Lankford for Kansas. Boshi guarded by Bradford. Miles in the corner. Here's the matchup, Vern. And he's at the let me say, I see the whistle blue on the baseline. Before the jump. I, I don't think the, oh, there must have been a kick because they reset the clock. And so Aaron Miles will inbound now for the Jayhawks of Kansas. 14.48 to go. One seed against the four. Here's Collison. Nice. There's a touch underneath Collison beauty first time they got it all night Which tells you about cook not being on the floor. They had body people way up the lane great presentation First field goal for Collison. Here's head strong move foul Boshi let's go back to that little touch from Gooden to Collison. Uh, they set it up beautifully. You can just see Collison's getting his man set as Gooden pops out. And once the catch is made, the reverse, you pin your guy. And look at that angle pass. The rest rather simple for the big fella who's got McHale-like moves around the rim and has shown the ability to put it on the floor as Boshi gets one. With the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevy will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for over 30 years. 
One of two at the line in a one point game. So now Boshi, who picked up his third foul. Collison finds Goodman, and the putback is good. I tell you, they're starting to get touches on the box. That's dangerous. When they start screening or making those interior passes, they've broken down the defense. Three point game yet again. Archibald is getting ready to come back on the floor for the Illini. Williams not there. Gooden clears it to Kansas. Now Aaron Miles left side. Langford. What an athletic play. A great adjustment, Vern. That was a charge for most mere mortals. We mentioned earlier, he is a slasher in the open floor. His ability to slide by people, attack the tin. A little kiss. Jayhawks. Hawkins threw it away. Fitch was cutting to the basket. And you know what? That play was made by Dixon, understanding that Hawkins will dish out, made the passing lane tough. Maryland leads it, 62-57. BA Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by the Honda VTX and by Sprint PCS. 13.44 to go in this one, a six-point lead, a five-point lead now for Kansas. Tomorrow's lineup, Missouri against Oklahoma, a tip time of 4.40. And then the second game, Kent State-Indiana to follow that one. Here's Sean Harrington, who's back on the floor now for Illinois. Frank Williams, Brian Cook also back with three fouls, two strong. Archibald gets the offensive rebound for Illinois. Steps now. Oh, they got a foul before. Bill Self's been down the block before. Interesting the connection when Larry Brown played coach of the Larry Brown. Of course, Larry Brown, a big fan of Roy Rubens. Uh, uh, Roy Rubin. How about me? How about that? Roy Williams. And of course, uh, Larry goes back to the Caroline days a few years before Roy Williams. But the cook on the floor, Bill Self, took advantage. Went inside. They got a great look. Of course, Archibald on the weak side. And unsuccessful at the free throw line. Bill Self played collegiately at Oklahoma State, and then his first job was as an assistant to Larry Brown at Kansas. And of course, Jayhawks, winners of the national championship, 1988. They did that as a six seed, remember? And a guy named Danny Manning led the way. Now here's Miles Harrington. Will uh, guard him. Gooden comes left side. Boshi, there's the switch. Cook out the trap. Bradford. In trouble, finds Hayward in the corner. Got it! How about Langford? All right, Langford. And the double, the blitz of the pick and roll. Boshi with great composure. 13 to go. Archibald. Langford tips it as it goes out of bounds. You can see the little things picking up now. Just good reads defensively by both teams. Great reaction that time by Langford. 53 47 under 13 remaining Bradford quickly around in the hands of Frank Williams tries to take miles off the dribble gets a little elbow the shot not there good cook picks it up and got it that's one of those hustle plays quicker to the ball Brian cook at the other end miles quick hands of Harrington miles gets it back. 12 and a half to go. Boshi left penetration dish back. Langford, Gooden. They'll reload. Miles. Burn, you know the defense is good when Kansas is dribbling a lot. Eight on the shot clock. Here's Miles all the way. The putback is not there for Gooden. And it's chased down with a fresh 35. Jump stop. Archibald. He thought he had a clean block. Well, there's always some contact. I thought up top it was pretty darn good. But Miles' ability to run it down and then the post pass. And right here, I mean, a lot of the ball, of course, we see it one way, and the fans certainly see it their way. Uh, but the ability of Miles and the effort uh, gets good to the free throw line. Archibald with his fourth. Heinrich's going to come back on the floor with his fourth, and he'll give Miles a rest. Archibald replaced by Kripalia, senior for senior. 
Now, Roy Williams has great confidence in Heinrich now. See what kind of adjustments they make defensively for him. He just has to avoid those situations where uh, it's up for grabs. You know, just play solid, contain your guy, don't gamble on the defensive end. Now, Corey Bradford, who today started his 135th game for Illinois, every game in his career since uh, first put on the Illini uniform. Cook. Langford with the job, doing a nice job denying Williams. Pull up. Harrington. That's just inside the line. It's for two. I think he did that because Bill Self said, take Heinrich. Maybe get him out of the game. Now at the other end, Heinrich guarded by Williams. Good slip. Simeon. Got it. How about Langford third? He has provided such a lift for this team. A lot of guys would have jacked it up, but as Simeon just moved to the box, his ability, the extra pass, now a lot of guys, nice little interior pass, warding off one and getting to the other side of the rim, and ooh, it teetered for quite a while. Foul was on Bradford, Simeon with a free throw. Eleven sixteen remaining in regulation. Kansas by six. Minutes to play. Three-point game at the Carrier Dome. Dixon's got a big man on him. Holden. Wilcox. That's Estel. I don't think Maryland has really looked for a shot beyond about three feet in the last 12 minutes. They are really pounding things inside. Dixon hasn't had a chance to shoot too much in the late going. No, he really hasn't. As you can see in the first half, Dixon was the leading scorer and was very efficient with that scoring, but they didn't go inside much. But boy, this second half has been all inside. Nicholas returns. And Blake will get a rest. What time, guys? What time now? Here we go. What? 441 to determine. The second finalist in the East Regional. UConn is already positioned for a game on Sunday afternoon in the East Final. And there's a substitution of quality. Baxter in for Wilcox. 68 63 Terrapins with four and a half remaining. Oh, tough. Hawkins. Tough pass. Hawkins yep. took it right into traffic, and Maryland just held their ground, Jim. 15th turnover by Kentucky. I really think that Hawkins, and that was a good oh, move. Hawkins read it. Dixon defending. No shot, foul outside. That'll be the seventh team foul against Maryland. It'll put Bogans on the line, a one and one. Here's the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Bench points, and for Kentucky, that's all Estel. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online, enter the keyword CBS Sports Line. Jim, Gary Williams doing a wise uh, thing right here from a substitution standpoint. He knows that Hawkins can really pressure the ball. And when Nicholas out there as the point guard, Blake sitting down, I think that he felt that Kentucky might be able to turn that ball over, which Bogans was able to do. Uh, comes up short on that foul shot, however, so he comes right back with Blake so he can have his primary ball handler on the floor. Huge miss on the front end of a one and one with four minutes remaining. Dixon, big step to the basket. Follow up, no good. Good hit ahead. Prince will pull up. Pull up three. And Blake boxed out for the rebound. Doesn't have numbers, pulls it out. I thought Prince had hit that shot. You knew he was going to pull up for the three. Would have cut it to two. Oh, Baxter almost had a three point opportunity. Estel with the push. Well, Baxter uses that wide body. We saw it uh, so many times where he gets that excellent position. He just wears down that defender. Estel has been called upon to play a lot of consecutive minutes in this second half. He's done the job on the offensive end, but you know he's got to be wearing down a little bit defensively. Baxter with 14 on the game, 12 in the second half. 
Big half by Baxter. Big half by Estel. Baxter been to the line 208 times this year. Just goes to show you how tough it is. And he gets you in foul trouble. He makes you go to your bench. Short word on that one. Oh, I got a roll. So a uh, Maryland working margin of seven ties their largest lead of the night with three and a half left in the game. There's Langford on oh. Bradford. What a defensive play. Excellent response. We near the 10 minute mark in this one. The regional semifinal. Second year in a row these two teams have met at this point in the tournament. Last year, Illinois prevailed. Great play by Johnson. Boy, were they ready for the inside screen? Run out for Cook. There's Langford again. Whatever you need, he's been able to provide magnificent effort this evening. Now, Miles. Oh, that's oh, oh brother. Tipped, controlled. Harrington has it for Illinois. Back to Johnson. Pretty. Cook. Got it. Ryan Cook has run the floor, been available. Very important. He waited, waited, and Johnson fouled him, and Johnson tries to pick up a charge. Four-point game with nine, 15 remaining. Williams guards Boshi. Simeon wants it in the low post. Back to Collison. Off the glass, not there. The putback is good. That's where his game has taken on another dimension. He can drag you out and put it on the floor. Great penetration and then the counter. Kansas by six. Here's Brian Cook, fall away jumper. Collison with a rebound. Oh, they really didn't need it, but they get away with it. Oh. How about Aaron Miles and then the run out? I'm so impressed with his courage in the open floor. Ooh. Here's Miles, the kid from Portland, to Langford, the kid from Fort Worth. Tayshawn Prince was 17 for Kentucky, but the Cats are down seven. Billy, how do they get back into it? Well, Jim, that was one stat surprised me there. Kentucky leading 33-31 and rebounding. Good job that time by Holden, who is really having an excellent game out here tonight. So timeout called by Kentucky. And we'll be right back to the Carrier Dome. Helping defensively, blocking shots. You deserve a rest, young guy. Uh, but how about in the open floor, Aaron Miles? I mean, I, I would say eat the ball, just run your offense. But boy, big plays like that, you got to admire point guards with that kind of courage. Now Brian Cook gets it from Frank Williams. 8:20 to go, and the pass to Brian Cook over Collison. Two more, and he throws them. Turn, face, look him in the eye. They don't come at you. Drill it. Brian Cook with 11. Of course, the sidebar to this game, his father, Norm, played for Kansas back in the 70s. His dad, a victim of mental illness, uh, has been a troubled life since he played for the Jayhawks. There's Gooden guarded by Cook. Miles back top of the key, Luther Head. What a brilliant game Aaron Miles has had tonight. Nice show by Archibald, but he leaves Callison all along. What a run to the rim. Callison sniffed that one out. Archibald overhelped, couldn't recover. An eight-point game again, seven and a half to go. Collison with seven all in this half. Recall he played only six minutes in the first half because he picked up three fouls. And here is Brian Cook. Again, and trying to take this Illinois team and put it on his shoulders. I was just going to say, ride him. Get it to him. They go zone now against KU. 7.05 to go. Collison. Strong drive. Got the bounce. You can't leave him alone. he will pick you apart facing the basket or with the back to the hoop. 
Archibald with the screen. Williams with the penetration, and I believe Simeon's going to get charged with yeah, the foul. I think you're right. Just reach the arms in. They switched to zone, uh, the Illini, but a great counter by KU. Langford and Carey come back in the game from the Kansas bench. The Jayhawks lead 65-57 time call. Second half doing work inside. All right, Clark, we will keep updated on that game for you. Let's go back to Syracuse. Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Maybe he can throw one up. Kentucky down seven. Had to burn off a timeout, failing to get the ball inbounds before the five count. Bogan tripped by Holden. That'll be a one and one for Bogans, who's already missed on one occasion the front end of a one and one. Nicholas and Wilcox return for the Terrapins. Bogans tonight uh, passed Frank Ramsey on the all time scoring list. Prince passed Alex Groza last week and Cotton Nash yeah. in tonight's game. So Number you seven start, all time. Now you got to remember guys only played three years back in those days in the case of Prince is a four year player. Bogans misses the front end of two one on ones now. Kentucky can ill afford to come down a court with possessions and not get some points on the board. Dixon outside tonight. Normally he's been down on that baseline. Nicholas is the one doing all the running on the baseline. Six seconds. Late Long three. And a rebound plucked away by Prince. He's going to drive it all the way. Rolls out and Baxter secures it. That was a tough miss for Prince. So a terrific drive on his part. He'd like to have that one back. Kentucky's had his chances. Two blown front ends of one and ones. That missed lay in. Rejection, Kamara. 220 to play. Maryland surprisingly spreading things out, so Baxter no longer the factor down inside. Gary Williams trying to use a little clock here. Prince, that was a wild shot. Prince is on the floor, so there's numbers. Maryland, bad pass by Blake. Prince is open for a three. Blake closed in on him. Bogans gives it up. Hayes. Timeout, Kentucky. Kentucky, Billy had gone over four minutes without making a field goal until that one. 70 65 under two minutes to play. Jumper Bradford way off the mark. Ooh, tough shot. Collison, here comes Kansas. Jayhawks lead by eight. Collison thinks about the three. Williams was out on him. Now Lankford and into the corner. It's for Jeff Carey. And they play bigger now against the zone. Carey, Collison, and good. Miles in the corner. Not there. A rebound. Collison. What a solid second half he's had after the foul trouble in the first 20 minutes. But this time the rebound for the Illini. Six. With a minute 53 remaining. Jim, it shows you how Blake, who has been the best at assist turnover ratio in the Atlantic Coast Conference, never should have thrown that last pass. This kind of thing really gets you in trouble. What you want to do now is use as much clock as you can. Don't give that other team a chance. Hawkins, his former high school teammate, fouls him. And it's a one and one. That's the ninth team foul on Kentucky. Bobby Smith looked like he wanted a foul on that play. I think it's a little early to foul, just down two possession game. Particularly the way that Maryland looks like they're wanting to use some clock. You've got enough time here to get the ball back. Blake oh. misses. Boy, we've seen some front ends of one and ones. Very important in this game. 87% free throw shooter missing on the front end of the one and one. Hawkins again looking for help. That's a travel on Kamara. Kamara expected Wilcox to, in effect, go for the block. But again, you see Hawkins penetrate and pass. Mouton in for Maryland. And Blake, Blake goes out. Out, huh? Interesting. And he misses the front end of a one-on-one, -on -one, but he's 
percent free throw shooter on the season. As soon as he came by, Gary Williams, he said, just sit down, I'm putting you right back in. You talk about a dangerous pass cross court under the other team's basket. Look at Prince sitting down there and guarding a smaller man. Nice job. Next Kentucky foul will be double bonus time. Nicholas lost control of it. Prince up ahead. Here come the Cats. And right through the fingertips of Bogans. Both teams really turning this game over. Very uncharacteristic of teams of this caliber. Tubby Smith over there, though. Again, the changed personality that we see of him with this team. Blake right back for Maryland. You talk about 30 seconds or so, Jim, of missed opportunities Swander for both teams. Chances on each end. Absolutely. Blake coming to the ball over the top to Baxter, gets it to Blake. Just under a minute to play. Maryland with the five point lead and possession. And a foul outside. On Bogans, it'll be, you know, on Prince, it'll be a double bonus, two shot situation. Four times in the second half, Kentucky pulled even with Maryland, but they never moved ahead. Jim Dixon to the line, we talked about um, what a good free throw shooter Blake is, but Dixon's a 90% free throw shooter. Now Fitch coming into the ball game, going to try to get a little bit more outside shooting as Tubby Smith knowing he's going to have to think three here. Good take it to seven, very important free throw, makes it a three possession game. 72-65 with 51 seconds. Timeout on the floor here at the Carrier Dome. Maryland up seven over Kentucky. Sport, I, I'm just trying to picture you in a rugby game. <laughs> I don't think I'd last long. The initial snap and out, uh, but the effort expended by both clubs has been terrific. I think Illinois' difficulty is scoring, Vern. Right. They just haven't been able to, con on consecutive trips, get it inside. It's been perimeter and maybe a turnover on occasion. Right, they're resetting the uh, shot clock, 35 seconds, with 4.38 to go. Kentucky ball down seven, 51 seconds remaining. Maryland, you can see with Holden there, tough guy to throw over the top of. Hawkins gonna push this ball up the floor. You can go for two here because you need three possessions anyway. But Hawkins. you don't want to take time. Tayshawn with the three. Tough shot. Last touch by Maryland. And if you're Blake, you did the wise thing there just to go ahead. You don't need to get possession of the ball. Just make sure that Maryland doesn't, I mean, that the Kentucky doesn't get an easy putback. Bogans comes off a screen. Looked at a three, kicks it out. Fitch shoots one instead. Front of the rim. Maryland ball, Mouton foul. He'll shoot two. Estel with a foul just as he came down. Well, I, I am really wanting to compliment Tubby Smith in regard to his demeanor with this team, a team that's had all kinds of problems this year, and you can see a complete difference in the way he used to respond on the sidelines. Estel fouls out with that one. Jim, it's tough for a coach to make that kind of change in midseason, and it shows you just what a smart guy he is. This season started out in the NCAA tournament. Eight coaches who have won national championships. Jim Calhoun and Tubby Smith were here tonight. Jim Calhoun's still alive. Looks like it may be down to one. Estel with a huge second half. 12 points on the night, all of them in the second half. Fouls out. He really did an excellent job offensively and had to play a lot of continuous minutes and guarding Baxter on the other end of the floor. Good job on his part. Mouton to shoot two. Kentucky fell last year in the round of the Sweet 16 to USC in the East 
regional game down in Philadelphia. Mouton two for two. Nine point lead. Half minute to play. That's the largest lead of the night. Hawkins loses control of it going in. And it's looking now like a Maryland UConn final in the East. They met earlier this year in Washington. And Maryland beat the Huskies 77 65. I would have to say that that game has very little relevance now, Jim, because I think this uh, Connecticut team, which was extremely young at that point in the season, a lot better ball club now than it was then. Grown up big time in the late going with 12 straight wins. Dixon for two, again, 90% shooter. Jim, I, I mentioned that Kentucky had beat number one seeds. They beat Minnesota, remember, in the final four in 97. And then, you know, you don't ever think about this, but Rick Pitino was not the number one seed going into when he played Mass, Massachusetts was number one in the nation that particular year in the Final Four. There's Tayshaun, Tayshaun going Prince. out. That's great, the, great career. Coming to a close here tonight. One of the most memorable Kentucky performances ever with that 41 point, nine rebound, four assists, three blocks, no turnover performance against Tulsa. Prince's reign at Kentucky comes to an end here tonight. Bogans floats. Back out, Hawkins with a three, rattles it home. You can see Maryland, all the players howling, no foul. They do not want to stop this clock. And Kentucky is not going to foul now either. Let this game end up. Timeout called by Dixon. Doubled up, he calls a timeout. Maryland saved a lot of timeouts in this ball game. It's going to be a Maryland-Connecticut final in the East on Sunday here in Syracuse. Hold with two minutes and 36 seconds remaining. 69 66 Jayhawks. This Greg Gumbel in New York with six seconds to go before a Maryland victory over Kentucky. We're going to take you out to Madison, Wisconsin, where Illinois has pulled it within three of Kansas coming up on two and a half to play. Let's join Vern Lundquist and Bill Rafter. I'm Vern Lundquist, great communication skills here. The trap, Illinois knowing after a great opportunity at the other end that they've got to come up with something. Everybody's calling timeout. Leading by three with two and a half to go. In the corner, Williams, there's the entry pass underneath Collison. And what an effort by Miles on the baseline. Right to the correct spot, Collison loading up. 11 points, Collison, Kansas by five. High pick and screen. The runner, no good. Archibald gets it, kicks it outside. Harrington. Tip, good. Archibald. He got away with it, but good aggressive play. 14 for the senior from Scotland. A three-point game with 1.52 to go. Kansas had been up by 10, seven unanswered for the Illini. Got it to within three. That's where we are now. Too strong. Good wrestling match. Archibald for Illinois. He has stepped up magnificently. The tip at the other end, the last trip, and that time seals it, sealing the rebound. Frank Williams. Spin move, kicks it back. Cook for three. Archibald, another offensive board, heaves it up and goes to the line. He just wanted to get to the free throw strike. What an effort. Will he be strong enough to make the free throws? He's got to be exhausted. This is an open look, and they dodge one here by Harrington. But look who's right in the correct spot. Over the top, Archibald, but expending so much energy and effort, taking everybody. This is just a hope and a prayer and an opportunity. If that were a bed, he'd be down there for eight hours. <laughs> and Collison fouls out. Collison picks up number five with 115 to go. One rebound away from a double-double. What a wonderful effort for Robert Archibald in this second half. 14 points, nine rebounds, and a trip to the free throw line where for the night he is six of eight.
One more. Langford comes back on for Kansas as Bill Self looks on. So this game would make a young man old quickly. With exhausting, punishing. And the effort right now by Archibald, foremost in this line eye recovery. Gooden with a rebound. The margin of difference is two with 110 to go. Heinrich on with four fouls, gets a screen from Gooden. Simeon on the glass could be tough because Archibald somewhat fatigued. One to go. Harrington guards Heinrich. Crossover dribble, back penetration. Good block by Archibald, come back out. Shot clock at eight. Boshi, a prayer, unanswered. Archibald with another rebound. What else? They had plenty of time to get a better shot. Timeout now. Illinois. Sessionero, Illinois. 37.1 left, the Illini down by two. You see the team foul, seven and eight. And Robert Archibald now with a double-double in what might be his final game for the Fighting Illini. Hoping, of course, that they can advance and take on Oregon. Will it be Kansas? Will it be Illinois? 71-69 with 37 to go. Look for Williams penetration, but it should be to Cook or Archibald on the block. Langford on Williams. There's the help. Act to Cook for three in the lead. No, tip. Good volleyball. What an effort. Big time snatch. Archibald goes for the foul. Had no choice. You don't have to rush down. That make the quick jack. Go for a good one. Get your defense at. See if you can steal. Give one away. Jeff Boshi at the line with 19.4 to go in Madison. He is joined by Heinrich and Langford. Collison sits with five fouls. Simeon and Drew Gooden. 80% free throw shooter guy that's been down the block. First time at the line tonight. He shoots one and one. Rebound Williams. 15 to go. The screen from Cook. The runner kicks it back. Rapalia Harrington on the floor. Baseline. Williams. No. Here comes Lankford. The giveaway by Harrington. Oh, they couldn't have gotten a better opportunity. Scrappy play by Illinois and an open look. Couldn't have drawn it up any better. Langford goes to the line with 2.8 left. Three of four tonight. Illinois. Time called Illinois. Whew. Be right back. Two point lead for the Jayhawks with 2.8 remaining. Illinois now out of timeouts, and the possession arrow does favor the fighting Illini. Keith Langford, the freshman from Fort Worth, off the bench. A marvelous contribution tonight. And a chance to perhaps secure the victory. He has been so solid. Everything you could ask of him, he's been able to provide, whether it's passing, defense, reacting, some jumpers and penetration. One and one with 2.8 remaining. Uh, getting set up the pass to half court if there happens to be a miss. One more. Uh, this is the one that changes it all. Four point game. Timeout call. 2.8 remaining. Well, the sellout crowd at the Kohl Center in Madison has enjoyed both of these games. In the first, 
Oregon advanced with a two point victory over Texas in this one. It's been tenacious from the get go and here we are with four left. That's one of those games where both coaches have to feel satisfied at the performance. I'm sure if Illinois loses a great disappointment the effort of both teams extending themselves totally and of course Roy Williams able to yo yo people in and out with the foul problems and how about Archibald uh, the, his effort the end of this game was just magnificent before he fouled out Robert on the money. Well Archibald one of five men who might be playing his final game tonight the others one of the others throws it in here Cook turnaround jumper not there Kansas advances. Roy Williams that's a well deserved sigh. Two of his stars in foul trouble in the first half. Collison and Heinrich. Collison ultimately fouled out. Kansas wins it 70 69. They saw a 10 point lead almost evaporate. And now the Jayhawks will take on the Oregon Ducks here at the Kohl Center on Sunday afternoon with a tip time of 2.40 Eastern. It's a one seed against a two seed. Chevrolet most valuable players of the game Frank Williams for Illinois and Drew Gooden from Kansas Williams with 15 points and five rebounds and a couple of votes from courtside would go to Robert Archibald Frank Williams has played his final game he announced that he will go into play for pay Roy Williams in his 14th season his team wins it Greg Gumbel along from New York after these messages. Rebound Williams. 15 to go. The screen from Cook. The runner kicks it back to Paglia. Harrington on the floor. Baseline Williams. No. Here comes Lankford. The giveaway by Harrington. Oh, they couldn't have gotten a better opportunity. Seems like we say this every night. Not a bad night of NCAA tournament <laughs> basketball. Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg, welcome back to our studios here in New York. Remind you, coming up after late local news, stay tuned for the late show with David Letterman. Tonight, don't miss, Dave has the Foo Fighters, Jack Black, and top 10 complaints of the Survivor Castaways. It's tonight on Dave. We'll be with you at noon Eastern time tomorrow on the road to the Final Four. At 1 Eastern time, the men's Division II championship game between Kentucky Wesleyan and Metro State. 3.30 Eastern, we're back with the road to the Final four, and then at 4:30, number 12 Missouri against number two Oklahoma in the West. Number six, at seven o'clock, number 10 Kent State, and number five Indiana in the South Regional. And then on Sunday, the road to the Final Four comes your way at two Eastern time. At 2:30, it'll be number two Oregon, number one Kansas from Madison. At five o'clock, the East Regional Final, number two UConn and number one Maryland from Syracuse. The final score of our final game tonight: Illinois falls to Kansas. The Jayhawks win at 73-69. A short while. A while ago, Leslie Visser with Coach Roy Williams and two of his players.